Jeff. I got something for you. Jeff. What's up? Jeff. What's up? <laughs> what do you get when you hold a heavy metal band together for 41 years? You get celebration decay. I've been nice. for hours. I haven't even nice. shown on this yet. Oh, wow. That's the new album. I just got it in the mail. It comes out August 21st. Congratulations. Yeah. That was thanks. Cool. thanks a lot. We're, we're really excited about it. Now we, you know, we've, uh, something really different happened for us this time around, you know, uh, in the past, normally I've gotten like a, you know, a cool lineup together. And, you know, we try to establish a chemistry amongst us and work on songs, go in the studio, cut the album, and then hit the road. But uh, this time around, when Gunner, uh, our new guitarist, and Nick Courtney, our new singer, Gunner DeGray, our, our new guys joined the band, uh, they came in on the Digital Dictator Tour, and which started off being like 20, 25 shows and maybe a month. And it blew up into this thing where it was like a year and a half. We did 108 shows. The guys wow. learned like so much of our material and like, you know, really understood the sound of the band. And, and you know, like Dave, you guys, all you guys know, there's there's nothing like doing 100 shows that makes a band tight, you know. And uh, so we, we went into the studio after that. And uh, we really, you know, I'm really happy about this album. It's got a really band feel. Um, my new young guitar player is just a real virtuoso. And Larry Mons, you know, he's just been laying down the thunder on the drums forever. Him and I, Ever. him and I, like you right. and Lee, man, you know, the original members holding it down. And, uh, you know, man, we're just lucky to be surrounded by some great, talented guys and uh, really excited about this album dropping on August 21st. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, congratulations. And yes, yeah, just like with Heathen, with David and Lee, but the same for Vicious Rumors, if Jeff and Larry Howe not in it, yeah. it's not Vicious well, Rumors. Yeah, well, so, Jeff, and, legend, Jeff, and, legend. Jeff, Jeff and Larry have been together longer than me and Lee, I think. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah. You know, we I started the band in 1979, uh, yeah. wow. which was, you know, up in, up in Santa Rosa. And Larry's been with uh, uh, with me, you know, 35 years or you know, so it's it's been incredible, man. We've been through thick and thin together. Uh, we we've we've seen it all. <laughs> we started a few families and we tore a few apart. Uh, you know, we we we've had a great time. We've had a great run, and uh, you know, we're we're both pretty really thankful. I think just that we've been able to enjoy this adventure of heavy metal all these years. Hey, Jeff, I know you guys, um, hometown boys, Bay Area guys, for a long time, but I don't think everybody realizes from around here is that you guys are really, really big, bigger in Europe, it seems. Isn't that true? You know, Europe turned in from our second album on, man. Europe just turned into our number one market. And um, we were just, you know, I'll tell you, we were thankful that we were having some success anywhere, you know, so... Um, and, and the European fans are so passionate and uh, the, the, the record company there is uh, the, the people are so professional and knowledgeable. We're with uh, SPV Steamhammer. We've been with them. It's my longest relationship with any label, like 10 plus years now with Steamhammer SPV. And uh, yeah, I feel really lucky to have this relationship that I've had in Europe Um you know, some of those cities, I've been there so many times, I kind of know my way around the towns and have like a few of my favorite restaurants and stuff. So it's just been incredible, man. And, uh, you know, we were in Europe when the curtain fell on this whole pandemic thing. And uh, right. we had shows canceled and like basically like, you know, racing to get back to the uh, back to Germany before the border closed. And, um, you know, it, we, we've been so excited to have this new album. And uh, and I know Dave feels the same way and about uh, and spend spend to all of us feel the same way when you, you work so hard on a project. And then now, you know, we're not going to be able to tour. But I you know, I'm just thankful SPV even was willing to put the album out at this stage. And um, I, I hope that the fans, you know, without buying concert tickets, are going to want to support the bands that are releasing albums right now. And I, I wish you guys all all the best with your releases and uh man 
it's great to be still making music, man, and uh, in dark times, and that's what kind of gets everybody through it. Right. So, Jeff, can you tell me, you were talking about that digital dictator kind of an anniversary tour, uh, a 30 date tour that morphed into <laughs> hundreds of shows. When did, so what was the plan? So that was, the, and then it just kind of had this open end, you just extended it. And was that this last tour that you got, almost got stuck in Europe with the COVID? It was, no, it was actually um, the end of 2018 and throughout 2019. So w oh, okay. w when we were over there on the COVID thing, that was a, a different thing. We were just over to play a few festivals uh, and, and, um, uh, and a few, uh, in you know, club shows in between. But the Digital Dictator Tour, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, if you would have told me, you know, 35, uh, 30 years ago that we were going to do 100 shows on this album 30 years later, I, I you know. I would have just probably smiled and was said, I know, I hope so, you know, but right. it, it was, it was a great adventure. And um, I think it really put, uh, it, it was, it was the timing of it was just great because it put Larry and I really in touch with our early roots and it gave Nick and Gunner a chance to uh, learn all this classic Vicious Rumors material and be really familiar with the history of the band so that like when we when we switched gears and went into recording mode uh, for Celebration Decay, you know, like we already had this great, you know, established chemistry and, and a full understanding, uh, you know, and these guys, you know, these guys are smart and talented and, um, you know, we're very helpful with the... Uh, very helpful with the uh, uh, orchestrations and we collaborated on stuff together, which is something else in the last few years, I've done like all the rhythms and most of the harmonies and just brought in a few guys, uh, Brad Gillis and a few, few hot shots to come in and do some extra solos. But on this album, you know, Gunner and I had such a chemistry already established. Like I play my side of the rhythms and he plays his side of the rhythms. And we have that kind of natural chorus that, that from two guys playing and, you know, he does a ton of leads and, you know, he wrote a couple songs on the record and we, we collaborated on, on about seven or eight of them. So you know, I got these really young, talented guys and, uh, you know, we've just been uh, lucky enough to survive and, and keep going strong, man, for, you know, 40 plus years now, 41 years. Yeah, that's amazing. Hey, can we play uh, the Death is Eternal, your first single off the new album? Oh, it would be a pleasure.
kind of sound in the vocals there too yeah um you know <laughs> nick, nick courtney too. he's definitely comes from the you know maiden priest you know do vicious rumors like he just fits so well with us instantly and um it's been great working with him and you know the people really responded to him really well too he's like a tall broad shouldered like got great stage presence he's super humble super cool guy so yeah man it's just it's all good right now, man. We're just waiting for the world world to heal, man, so we can take it out on the road again. You know, Jeff, I think that you guys know who you are. You've always been an American straight metal band with an edge. And I think that's why Europe loves you so much, because there's not a lot of bands just doing straight metal anymore. You know what I mean? And you got a real singer, because most bands nowadays don't even have that. And you got great guitar players, and you got... Larry playing drums and totally solid. You guys have really always been doing class acts. Hey man, you know we're just we're just doing what we love to do and um, and just you know I think when you when you stay true to yourself, you're true to your fans and you know we couldn't do it without everybody's support and and help. So Larry and I were just talking the other night how just like it's incredible this long run we've had, uh, just you know heathen too and and it's incredible what happened in the Bay Area that produced all these bands that were able to continue to make music for, you know, going on 30 years. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. If I can interject right there, what's going on is that they wrote some incredible music back then, right? And it's timeless. When you write good fucking music, people will always recognize it. Doesn't matter how far down the line it is or how young or how old people are. It's just good shit and if it hits one person like that there's bound to be another million that's going to get hit the same way by it and i think that's I all like that happens. Dude. Well, well said i mean i've, I've always yeah. been a song oriented guy i think the song is the first thing if, you know if you have a good song then everything else falls into place but uh yeah well well said man i mean we were we know all all of us came out at a time where uh, you know, we probably all thought that we were just local bands and like any other city in the United States or around the world. But, you know, who knew that the whole world would look to the Bay Area for this sound well, that, that came it, out? We have to always remember that Bill Graham was, was a big part of starting the whole thing with the Metal Mondays at his club at the Waldorf, you know. Well said, so bro. Much, well much said. respect Good for point. Bill Graham and his family. Um you know. That was, Dave, wasn't that, that was the highlight back in the day when we were, when the bands were playing clubs in the Bay Area and Northern California, when you played the old Waldorf, that was, that was the premier gig that you looked forward to. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting time, I'll tell you, you know, and I mean, I remember going to see Vicious Rumors in, even back in the, the Omni days. You know, and with Carl, with Carl, it was like it, yeah. when Carl, when Carl was in the band, it was like, where did this guy come from? Oh, and yeah. The guy was like magic. He was like magic. Right. That voice was magic. He was. You know? dude. Thank, he totally was. thank you, Dave. You, you know, I, I feel the same way. I mean, Dave goes way back, man. Oh, Dave I know. Knows. I know. I know. Dave and I go way back. <laughs> yeah. um, 
So, you know, I know, but Carl was a really special guy. I mean, it's funny. We would be on the road, and I, I remember this one time in particular. We were in Rome, and we admit we got to the Colosseum late. We were really bummed. We wanted to go in there, and so we we're, you know, we're standing outside and we're talking about it. And all of a sudden, I look over, and Carl's sitting down on this concrete thing with about fifteen cats around him. Like you know, <laughs> we we just got there like a minute. Like we just got there a minute ago. I love this story. And he's got like he's sitting at he's sitting there with like fifteen brand new friends. These these animals were just drawn to him. I mean, he just had a charisma that uh, was undeniable. And thanks thanks for bringing him up again, Brown. Oh, he was always he was always my favorite, and I was in awe of him. And he was you know he was always cool to me, and he always had a nice thing to say, and. Um, yeah, he was like uh, he was from like another dimension, you know. It's it's I, I sad to see him go, but it's kind of like almost poetic, you know, in the rock and roll world. So anyway, yeah. right. yeah, you know, we, you know, we celebrate is, his it's... life all the time, man. And uh, you know, yeah, we we've lost a lot of our brothers along the way, man. You know, with John, yeah. Carl, every all these guys, man. But if I had a beer left, I'd spill a little bit, but uh, I drank it all. We, we often toast to them, and uh, let's also share a good toast with each other, man, and just keep going strong, man. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Jer hey Jer Jeremy, were you going to say something? I was, but uh, I forgot. So <laughs> <laughs> In the heat of the moment. And Come on! Gone it's gone. Oh, uh, it's gone. But Dave, yeah, thanks for bringing up uh, Carl, because, yeah, you're right, like at the Omni out of the shows, you know how everyone would just be BSing, blah, blah, even when the band's starting. But when VR came on and Carl opened his mouth, everyone just stopped, right, and just shut up. And it was just, you know, just all eyes on stage at that yeah. moment. Yeah. It was Thank magical. You. It really he, was. He, would ha he would have nights where, like, we, we'd have parts in the songs, you know, and, and I would pretty, you know, we were, we'd be on tour for a while. So I kind of, you know, know what to expect, what he was going to do. But we'd have nights where he would just throw something in and, like, it was, and it was so badass that it would like physically just distract me from like playing in the show. Like, like what the hell was that? Like, yeah. that was so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. When, when he was yeah. feeling it, I, yeah, I know. I witnessed it many times. And I remember asking him one time, I'm like, dude, where did you learn to sing like that? He's like, oh, I used to sing with my brothers when we were kids. <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Turning on your favorite metal albums when nobody's there. And just going at it right uh, in your bedroom he told me that when he was in high school uh, he was playing in a local band in modesto and they were jamming in garages and they kept trying to find singers and they were trying guys out and, and, and yeah he plays guitar and harmonica and piano all kinds of stuff and uh, they were trying guys out and then like they couldn't find anybody and he's like and he's like one night at rehearsal he's like oh you know what fuck i'll just let me just give it a try i'll just try saying a couple of songs and then he just comes out with this voice and like his all the guys and the musicians in the room were just like what the hell have we been doing you know <laughs> uh, you know yeah. so it, it was like a said, funny story when he told he, me and, and let me tell you his son kevin is uh kevin gorski is such a talented young guy he, he's more yeah, of a yeah. he's more of a family man, you know. But um, you know, n making you know family priority, which I totally that was respect. Bad ass. But, you guys heard him at the Twilight uh, show. Oh yeah, he he's got his dad's genes, man. He's got his dad's sense of humor. I mean, he's his own man too. But uh, man, he is just uh, you know, part of our family forever. We've done some special reunions with him on vocals, and it's and it gives people like you know goosebumps, like. Because his sense of humor and his voice and his mannerisms are so much like his dad, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be around him. Yeah, he's a great That's really guy. Cool. That's really cool. Do you want to talk about your second? So I think your second single is the title track of the album. Uh, actually, oh, for Vicious Rumors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our, actually, it? our next so song. Okay? I'm gonna spill the beans right now, and Ooh. just because somebody else spilled the beans earlier, I'm just gonna jump in on that. It's bean spilling day. Uh, <laughs> but, but our second single is called "Pulse of the Dead," and that comes out mm. August seventh. 
but we got a lot okay. of stuff coming. Oh, there's, the there's like a little five part make. Uh, we did a little making of the of the album documentary too, and it's gonna come out in like five little mini parts in the course between now and August 21. But we also, yeah, we did make a couple more videos. Uh, we we've, we've made three videos already for the album. I think we're gonna do maybe two more, and we're talking about a live stream and just you know, all the possibilities that we could do just to keep, you know, keep the ball rolling in this time. Uh, you know, we're, we're also talking about getting a big head start in the next record. And uh, that way, you know, who knows, maybe when, when we're back on the road again, we'll have, you know, we can play songs from both records or whatever. But, you know, just, just like everybody, man, just trying to keep the ball rolling, keep it going, keep it heavy. Do we get to hear this Great. song? Pardon me? Do we get to hear this song right now? Oh, man. Uh, God, I would love to do that, but I think that would be just on the crossing the line of disrespect. Ah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, but Dave, if anyone could get it out of me, it would be you. And uh, At least buy him a pizza first. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, come on. You, you basically just gave the guy... The hardest. Walter's here. Sven's here. We're all here. <laughs> yeah. If you're comfortable, some, we could. We could. Friends. Jeff, if you're comfortable, I could stop the recording and you could play a little bit for us, and then, and then I could pause the recording. We won't have to take it. Oh, I'm not falling nope. for that again. A private screen. Oh, no. <laughs> you got me with that last time, honey. I'm not doing that. <laughs> what? <laughs> remember last time when you you like told us okay? Yeah, remember when you promised you turned the camera off? I'm not yeah. gonna play <laughs> <laughs> that one song about vampires, and you just played it. Well, you know what? Love it. Check this. All right, let, let's. Uh, no, we no, can't. We can't that. release it right now because that. of the label. The label. They're working in conjunction with the yeah, label. No yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. So why don't we? Okay. Well, yeah. No, we were we were giving you. We were uh, just messing with you. Why Man, I would about... love to. I would love to. And it was really fun showing <laughs> oh, the cover. Oh, totally. We would love to do that right now. I actually have the track. I can actually play it right now. But in fact, let me just do that one more time, just to show the cover. <laughs> nice. Yes. Look killer. I love the cover. The art was, was amazing. Thank you. What was that? Celebration decay. All in all, we've lost our way. Welcome famine, welcome hate. Extermination is our fate. <laughs> Jeff, why, why don't we talk about, um, you recorded, you guys recorded there at the studio, right? Right there at Fight with Juan? We did. In fact, Vicious Rumors has recorded every album here since 2006, man. We just fell in love with the okay. place. Why don't we talk about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, Juan and I got together first. I, 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 uh, we had so much time and we got pushed back because of the Digital Dictator Tour. The one good thing about that is I was able to write, you know, all kinds of riffs and parts and... Um, I got together with Juan early on and we just sort of went through the riff library and kind of picked out the ones we, we both thought were going to make a strong album. And, um, you know, and then from there we had the guys come in because my guys live in uh, Oregon and Washington. We're like all up and down the West coast. So we had them come in one at a time and, uh, you know, Larry and I did it, did it, got together and did it first. Um, Cut and uh, yeah, pound it. We had a re couple rehearsals here and then recorded it. And uh, Juan and I actually spent almost a month in pre production. Uh, we I got really lucky, and Juan had a cancellation right before our record project. And, and he offered me, you know, a, a great situation to, to, you know, really work on the album. Because really at the time, I wasn't even really ready to do it. I felt like I. You know, I felt like I needed more time. And Juan was like, man, you know what? I got this time open. Let's just get together. Let's make it happen. And for any of you musicians in the Bay Area that have worked with Juan, you know that when he says that, that you're going to get something good. You know, I mean, he's he just understands this music. And, uh, you know, it's great. It's just great. It's a comfortable situation. And he kind of just, you know, without, uh, you know, 
he kind of becomes almost like another member of the band and just wants it to be the best it can be like you do. So it's been great, man. It's been great working at Trident and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of Bay area bands. Juan's become a pretty famous guy. Sometimes I can't even get him on the phone anymore. You know, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Right now, he, yeah, we were talking about Zeus being a sought after, like, this kind of sought after guy. I mean, Juan is in that category. I mean, he's done some phenomenal stuff just recently. The Testament album, yeah. freaking amazing, you know, and this one, yours is, sounds really good from that first track that I've heard. So, yeah, so Juan, just amazing job. And it looks Absolutely. like you and Juan are super tight, too. So, I, I'm enjoying this romance between the two of you. So, um, did you how how did you meet Juan? Did you grow up together or? Oh, okay, I guess I walked into that. I met him in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pop up there. No, and then you took of, you, you may you may have heard of it. it just, he went home. He went home with him the first night. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you know me too well. No, I work with uh, Larry Howe. We Jeff is easy. Record. Remember the chat the last Chastain record? I think two records back. He played drums okay. on that, and um, he Larry just showed up one day. He's like, "Hey, I'm Larry Howe." I'm like, "Fuck, that sounds familiar." And he's like, "Yeah, I played in the VR." And I was like, "Oh shit!" And I actually had mm. like "Welcome to the Ball" and a couple other records, and I was like, "Oh my god!" So I recorded him. He killed it on that record. We sent it back to David. He mixed it. He was like, "Killer job on that." And I was like, "Great." And then so he later on, I worked on a couple other things, and then he just told Jeff when the time was right. Jeff's like, "I got the songs ready." He was like, "I know this guy." So Jeff came down for a meeting, showed up, we met, we said, what's up? We fucking showed devil horns, we fucking knocked heads, and we were like, holy fuck, dude, you're just like, just as metal as I am. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm like, bro, you want to make I, some fucking metal? And he's I like, try, I try to be as metal. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, let's fucking do this. And we made the War mm -hmm. Ball record with the singer from Hellstar. Do you guys know him? What's his name? That's James right. Rivera. James, James. Rivera. Remember, that was, dude, if you listen to James Rivera's shit, okay, he's a great singer, but I'm going to tell you, man, that I, I love James. I love all his work, but the work he did on the Warball record, to me, is some of the best shit he's ever laid down on tape. Fight me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> did you lay it down? that's where it all started. It all but started. But Juan, Juan, did you actually lay it down on tape? What? <laughs> Just yeah. One. I'm telling you, I really loved that performance on that. He, we really, he wanted to kill us at first, but then when we were done, even he was blown away. We were all blown away. 